Hey family, Joseph Babaifa connecting you to your destiny once again. Thank you so much for watching today. We have a great video right now on another path of Eshu. And that path of Eshu is Eshu Ni. Very interesting one, very popular one. And uh, definitely one that, you know, everybody should be versed in because it's a concept that really translates throughout Ifa as far as its confection and the way it looks and it being the issue or one of the issues, maybe the primordial issue uh, with two faces, right? So if you haven't had the opportunity or if this is the first time you're visiting Joseph Baba Ifa YouTube channel, please go ahead and tap on that subscribe button. We're growing every day, providing great information for everybody that wants to grow within this spirituality, right? So Eshu ni. When we look at the name, Eshu ni, ni means within or of. So it means, it can mean Eshu is within or Eshu is of or from, you know, from where? From nature, from earth, from himself. He's a self manifesting deity. Um, it could be referring to that. Eshu is within or Eshu is from. It could be referring to all the things that go into Eshu. Or it could be referring to the story that's associated with this deity where he was actually in the house, defended the house. Ni means within and we're usually within our homes. One interpretation we could give it. Eshu Ni. When we talk about this Eshu, it really manifests very strongly in the Odu, in the Odu of Obetrupo or Obetumako, right? Um... It is the issue of two faces, right? It has to do with the defense against hypocrisy, um, treachery, um, attacks. It's a very good defense issue because if you have two faces, you can protect yourself against a lot of different things. Now, especially enemies, witchcraft, all of these things. Now, there's other manifestations of multiple-faced issues, specifically two-faced issues, in other Odus, and we're going to get into those at the end of the video. So be sure to stick around, because we're going to be touching on Odus like Osalafobeo, like Ofungogunda, or Ofunfunda, and uh, a couple other ones that touch on these multi-faced issues, because a lot of people have a lot of questions about them, because they're just so interesting, right? What a concept. That's Africa. So, Eshuni. Obetumako has a story. Um, Obetumako is known as the Odu of where the innocent were slain or slaughtered, right? Or executed. And the reason it has that proverb is because it speaks of a story where there was a couple. And this couple, um, and now there's multiple versions of this story. Now, you may hear that Odudua was their father. You may hear... Um, you know, Odudua was the king that wanted them executed, any of these different things. But even before the couple, what happened was, is let's say Odudua, right? Odudua, who was the king of the land, did a divination for the land where he lived, where Obetrupong was identified. And it said that he was going to be dethroned by a child who was coming to take his, uh, his crown, right? Obviously, Odudua got freaked out. And he said, I'm not losing my crown to nobody. We're executing all children, right? Especially newborn boys. Now, if you look in the Bible, it actually has a pretty similar account. I don't know if it was with King Homer. I think it was. My, my, uh, my Israeli history isn't that great, um, you know, or my Jewish history or Catholic, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it, it, I believe it was him. But if not, you know, there's a very similar story where it speaks of where the king was being threatened. And, uh, you know, he actually attacked all newborn uh, boys, specifically after a young age. But um, what ended up happening was, is Odudua had a, had a daughter um, who ended up having a child um, with a gentleman. And, you know, it was, um, some people say that this was Eshuni. Some people say that Eshuni was the gentleman at the house, but they had a child, right? Odudua's grandson. And he was a pretty miraculous kid. He spoke. Obedumako is the Odu of the child prodigies, where people accelerated at a fast rate. The young assimilated a lot of uh, information, matured quickly, all of these things. So if you ever meet somebody with Obedumako, they're usually very intelligent. Or they have a child that's extremely intelligent. Not that they're not intelligent, but you know, as parents, we always want our kids to be, uh, you know, a little, a little more wiser than we end up being, right? That's what we raise them for. So what ended up happening was, is this put the family in in a little bit of a rut because, you know, the grandfather wanted all the newborns dead, and you know, his grandson was just born, so they went into hiding. But Odudu, I heard where they were, and he sent a hit squad to go off them. So when they did divination with Orumela, Orumela 
told them that they were going to be under attack and that they needed to offer sacrifice to the corners of their home or their hut or whatever the situation was so that they could defend themselves, right? So when they did this, there was an Eshu or a deity there, and his name was Eshu Ni, and he said, you guys need to go back in now um, because they're going to attack you, right? So when they went back in, the baby, um, you know, some versions said he actually picked up the bow and arrow and defended his family from the intruders who were coming in through the front door. After this, the family went back outside to the other corners of the house and repeated this process of feeding Eshuni. And every time they did so, Eshuni let them know when somebody was coming. And once again, this miraculous child defended his family. You know, you're talking about an infant holding a bow and arrow and, you know, good Lord, right? So word got back to the king that his grandson was actually the one slaughtering all of his assassins. So he's like, I got to go see this kid personally. So when he came and visited and he saw his grandson, he was overcome with emotion. He said, you know, what have I been doing? You know, uh, when you're a, when you're a head of household, when you're royalty, when you're just a man, right? With the descendancy, ultimately we are meant to be replaced. This is the process of life and nature. And there's nothing more beautiful than being able to be um, replaced um, by our descendants who are so capable. And Odudua became very proud of his grandson, Eshu, and, you know, basically abdicated the throne at that point and said, you know, the baby can rule from this point forward. He actually put a child in his place, right? And this is one of the manifestations of Eshuni, whether it be the child or the guy on the corner of the house, it represents the two aspects that stood back to back to be able to defend the household. And that's why Eshuni has two heads, to be able to guard the front and back door, right? And this concept is in Osala Fobeo, a little bit different um, Padakido. We'll get into it as well. But that's Eshuni, right? It's the Eshu of two faces. This is the story that really explains it. Um, you know, this Eshu has a lot to do with children, the protection of children, the protection of the household. Um, it has a lot to do with ascension, accomplishing things, goals. Because Eshuni helped the young man occupy the throne, which was ultimately his birth and blood right, because he was the uh, the first masculine heir of Odudua. So... That's one of the versions of the story in Obetumago where Eshuni first manifested, right? Really beautiful story. Um, so, you know, it touches on that. Now, other Eshus that have two faces, right? Because not every Eshu with two faces is necessarily Eshuni. Um, but one of them is, uh, from what I understand in Osala Fobeo, it speaks of Eshu Ijelu, right? Or some people call him Agri Yelu or Aijelu, etc. Probably a bunch of ways to say his name. But this issue has a little bit of a different um, story and background, even though it has two faces. And I'm going to go ahead and couple all the two-faced issues in this one just to be productive so you can see all the comparisons for those who have this issue or one of them, right? So in that sign of Osala Fobeu, it speaks of Shango. And Shango wanted to become, well, actually, I'm sorry. It was actually, it speaks of Eshu, forgive me. Eshu wanted to become a priest of Ifa. Right? He wanted to be initiated as a Mawalawo in Osala Fobeo, also known as Osaechu. And he actually did, and this is how. And what ended up happening was, is Olodumare told him, he said, if you can find me in the forest, I'll do Ifa to you for free. So Eshu was like, oh, it's not an issue. I'm in here all day. So it, this is, Osala Fobeo is actually the Odu where it speaks of the manifestation of the game hide and seek. And this is where it comes from. Olofing had a chance to hide. And Eshu went into the forest, and Olofing would play tricks on him so he wouldn't find him. Like, he'd whistle, he'd do, like, the little, uh, you know, ventriloquist thing. He'd hear a noise over there. Eshu would look over there. Olofing would hide to the point where, you know, Eshu became so frustrated, he just broke down and cried. He didn't realize it was going to be this difficult, and he didn't feel like Olofing was playing fair. So then his brother Shango comes into the forest, and he says, bro, why are you crying? And he says, you know, I'm trying to have this pact with, uh, with this guy you know, he's not playing fair, you know, I can't find him, now I have to stay here until I do it, I'm not progressing, you know, I need help, I, I don't know. And Shango said, how about this, let's stand back to back, and if we find him, he has to do Ifa to both of us for free. So they did that, and, you know, within very few moments, within a very, very little amount of time, Shango saw him, and he said, I caught you. So Olofing presented himself and he said, all right, Eshu, I'll do Ifa to you. And Eshu was like, no, 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 you got to do Ifa to my brother too. And they both were initiated as Bawalawus. So Eshu Ijelu sometimes comes in the manifestation of 
uh, a two-faced um, icon. I've seen them in wood. I've seen them in cement. There's so many different ways. But, you know, some people say that one face represents Eshu and the other face represents Shango. Kind of reminiscing the story in Osala Fobeo where they joined forces back to back to be able to achieve their goals. So when you're looking at the concept of the two-faced issues, you're defending against hypocrisy. You're defending against uh, being lied to. You're defending against being taken advantage of. It represents teamwork, where issue is trying to protect you from all the things that he went through, whether it be in Obetumago or Osalafobeo. Another issue that I have heard of or have seen having two faces, Eshu Madubela which is actually in the Odu Ofun Eko or Ofun Ogunda or Ofun Funda in the Afro-Cuban uh, tradition. Um, issue that has a lot to do with ch children as well, um, you know, protecting children, etc. You know, when you're looking at the concept of these two-faced issues, it's kind of all the same thing. Teamwork, protection, they have a lot to do with children as well. Um, but a really great issue to have. I, personally, I'm a huge fan of constructing them because I love the way they look. And, and the people I've given them to, I have a couple godchildren with them. Um, you know, they've gotten real results from it. Every issue is wonderful. It's just about having that one that's compatible with you. And most importantly, keeping up your habits so that issue and you are on good terms, right? So great video, guys. Issue and been meaning to come out with this one for a while. Um, really appreciate you guys supporting. We were able to touch, touch on a couple different issues in this video. Always happy when we can do that. I'll put them all in the title so they can be identified by those who have them and need more information on them. And we got some free tidbits on a couple signs there, right? Obetumako, Osalafobeo, Funfunda. You know, Odu is a beautiful thing, but, you know, we have to we have to maneuver it carefully because we always want to put people in a position to succeed and never overexpose them to things that, you know, uh, don't apply to them. But, you know, this is general information for those that have these kind of issues. So, guys, things are going wonderfully. We really appreciate all the support here. Botani got candles and more. Joseph Babaifa. Botanica Candles and more. We appreciate you. If you haven't gotten your annual reading done, make sure you do that. Very important. Keep up that maintenance. It's your spiritual physical, right? So very important that we get that done. Please be sure to subscribe if you don't have if you haven't had the chance. We're growing every day. And uh, we really appreciate you guys. And, and sincerely from us here, Botanica Candles and more. Joseph Baba Ifa, Iboru Iboe Bochiche. Thank you and have a blessed evening. Take care.